I'm Chief Yanis, EMS OIC. The EMS division has created something new that highlights crew's performance above and beyond on significant calls. Today's call we're highlighting occurred on February 14th, 2023. This call occurred at approximately 3 p.m. and the units involved were Air Rescue South, Battalion 8, Battalion 12, Engine 43, Engine 45, Engine 48, Ladder 29, Rescue 48, Squad 69, the TRT OIC, and EMS 48. And now you're going to listen to some of the experiences and challenges the crews faced that day. Station 48, start responding. One call at this time of a person hit by a train. We had a call come in as person hit by a train. It was a long train that was stopped at the time. Uh, we did not find the patient at the QTH that came in. We started um, Ladder 29 and Battalion 12 on the west end. And as more information came in, uh, we found the patient closer to 94 Avenue. We adjusted and made our way over there. Ladder 29 pulled in right before us with Battalion 12. The patient's still alive. Started PRT assignment. He's trapped under the train. They noticed they had a patient pinned underneath the train with his legs trapped under the train. Uh, Battalion 12 did a great job of early recognition that we needed a surgeon to get the surgeon going. At this time, uh, I made patient contact with Ladder 29's crew who started beginning patient care. We may have to complete an amputation to extricate the patient. When I got to him, I, I, I uh, did a quick head-to-toe assessment as fast as possible. I could see that I saw he was trapped. Uh, Chief at this time was command on already on the other side. And Chief we came back to me, he's like, hey, what do we got? What do we need? And I said, uh, Chief, we're going to need the surgeon. He said, all right, I already called the surgeon. It's going to go on the way. I go, well, make sure, that, make sure they bring a lot of blood. Advise the surgical team. We're also going to need uh, blood for a blood transfusion. We put the patient on oxygen uh, right away because he seemed like he was having trouble breathing. And then we started two um, interosseous in both shoulders to provide uh, fluid to the patient due to all the blood loss. We had bilateral IOs on him, a little bit of fluids on board. We couldn't really get an airway because he was face down in the gravel. Uh, so we did a little blow by with an armor breather. Uh, we noticed that he had, uh, his lung sounds were absent on one side. So we decompressed that, that side. Uh, it ended up being good, it started coming up. And um, from there, we gave TXA for, uh, for the bleeds that he had with the, with the tourniquets. We were trying to assess his airway and his airway was completely trismous. He was very hard, to, very, very hard to get an actual airway open because his head was actually in the rocks. So we tilted his head a little to the side. I tried to bag him for a little bit and it wasn't really working out very well because of the confined space that he had. And, and since the rocks, the, between his face and the rock, there was not a lot of space for me to actually get a bag in there. So we just gave him a non-rebreather as high as possible. And it was doing the trip. His, his, uh, his sats were maintaining the whole entire way. Which at the time, his O2 sat went from about 89 to 93. So we had instant relief on that. He tried to innovate him, but his airway was so mangled and such a lot of edema was happening that we, I, when I went in there, I couldn't see anything. So we went with a superglottic airway, went with the IGO. We went with the IGO and he was perfect. When we first got to scene, he was at a blood pressure of 70 palp. And when he left the scene from on Air Rescue South, he was at 160. Patient's being loaded into Air Rescue now, and uh, he should probably be at Kendall within five minutes. It's my understanding at this time the patient has a full recovery, 100%, and is out of the hospital, obviously, as a double amputee. We often talk about calls that went bad or things didn't go our way, and I think this time everything went pretty well. I think uh, in my years, I have t over 25 years on, this is probably one of the most extraordinary calls I've been on. And to get the result we got, I, I think it went outstanding. The severe bleeding and trauma uh, class that we recently took two, two or three weeks prior to the call came in, came in handy, given the circumstance. By putting all our training together, by adding these new drugs together, it definitely added to uh, this patient's outcome. I think it was a success. The EMS training that we have at Kendall Regional uh, with the decompressions, of the previous calls that we've gone over at Kendall Regional with the physicians over there, they definitely helped us out tremendously on this one. Well, I think the firefighter that did the greatest job, uh, most will agree, was firefighter Nick Lopez on Ladder 29 that day. Firefighter Nick uh, Lopez, he was outstanding. I mean, I, I, he didn't even think. 
it's a blessing to to have my my uh, my officers and my guy, and other firemen talk to talk talk a hottie about me, but it's it's just it's my job. That's the way I look at it. No matter what, every day of this world, it's just we come here to do work. We come here to get to save lives as much as possible, and and it's humbling. It's uh, it's it's very humbling to hear that, and and nothing that makes me very very happy to hear that. But it was a whole team effort that day. Again, I want to thank all the crews involved on this call, and I also want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for your hard work, your dedication, and your training. What you do out there does save lives every day. If you were part of a significant call and your crews went above and beyond to save a life, please contact the EMS division or an EMS field supervisor so we can choose the next EMS call of the quarter. Thank you, be safe, train hard.